Hey kids, let's make some awesome barbecued chicken legs. They're gonna be so tender. They are absolutely delicious, tried and true. Okay, I'm a pretty plain person, just a girl in her grill, charcoal grill. Now, if you have a gas grill, that'll work just fine as well. There's just a couple extra steps with charcoal. Well, actually a lot. <laughs> okay, so you need some charcoal. If you're either the, the kind that already has lighter fluid in it um, or a chimney, I prefer the chimney. And then you need some scrap paper and some tin foil. And that's pretty much it. That's not your literature book down there, by the way. I said scrap paper. <laughs> okay. Here's a secret, boys and girls. Let your chicken legs marinate while you're messing around with the charcoal and setting everything up. And, and having your food at room temperature when it goes on the grill, it will cook much faster and the center has a less chance of uh, being cold or raw. Uh, that's a secret with cooking on the grill is to bring that meat up to temperature. I would never want to take cold chicken right out of the fridge and throw it on the grill. It's got to it's got to warm up a bit. So, I love these baggies. This is a half gallon bag and you spice this however you want. You play with flavors. I always recommend squirting lemon on it to help tenderize. We have some olive oil in the top left to, um, you know, help spread the flavors around and some sea salt, rosemary, garlic, and smoked paprika. Bring whatever you want to the party. Just whatever tastes and flavors that you want to put on here. And I'd let that sit out for an hour, hour and a half. And, you know, it's all about timing. That's what cooking is. You've got to, you got to spend the time. So as soon as you know you want barbecued chicken, you could mix that up. And if you want, put it in the fridge, but then, you know, make sure it sits out for about an hour before it goes on the grill. Okay. Hey, and don't skip the olive oil because that's going to help make the skin nice and crispy. This is for charcoal that does not have lighter fluid in it. So you ball up a bunch of paper. Now don't pack it in there too, too tight. I've made that mistake before. Um, it's got to breathe, okay? So wad up a bunch of little pieces of scrap paper. Newspaper works really well. So pad that in there and then flip it back over and then we're gonna light it. Okay, if you like fire and you like cooking, you must get a cooking torch. That's what that little contraption is down there. Looks like a laser gun. It's got a safety on it and everything. That'll shoot four inch flames and make a cool propane sound. I love that thing. And you can get it at um, a bed and bath. Okay, so I've piled the charcoal in there and then I'm gonna take the little torch and light all the little circles around there. and Set it on fire. Man, I didn't realize how much I've used this. I've worn the paint off the handle. Yeah, I like well-loved things. Yeah, don't don't need something fancy and new all the time. Just look look how loved that is. How many barbecues that's gone through. Okay, so then comes the waiting. You have to wait for the charcoal to get hot. It's about a 20 minute wait. I recommend you stay outside with this um, just to keep an eye on it because sometimes it can go out if it doesn't completely catch in the center. So sometimes you have to go around and relight. It's just patience and listening to it. While you're waiting, you can prepare your grill. Simply rip out two sheets of tin foil and put it in there for easy cleanup. Hey, come here. I want you to look down in there. See the coals are starting to heat up? That, my friends, is red hot. And we did that without any lighter fluid. 
and that's what we want to look for. We want to look for the top briskets to start getting a little ash or a little gray on them. That's why I love cooking. It uses all of your senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. All right. Okay, it's ready. Not a minute to lose. Grab it by the handle. If you wait much longer, in the bottom will just be powder because I've done that before. <laughs> okay, let's turn it over. Pour it all on one side. We are going to use two cooking methods for our chicken, direct heat and indirect heat. Now, if you're using a gas grill, then you're going to light half of it and you're going to set it for 300 degrees. Time for more secrets. Notice my grill grate is not on there. That's because I need to spray it really good with some non-stick spray. And there are some made for grills and this is just what I happen to have. Spray it down real good and then patience, patience. Spray it, put the grill, put the grate on the grill and let it preheat for five minutes. This will keep your chicken skin from sticking. That is the worst mess in the world if you get chicken sticking to your grill. You do not want that. So let it heat up. Let the wire heat up in there five minutes at least. It's go time. All right, if you have a gas grill, then this is already heated up to 300 or the charcoal, put it directly over the coals. We're going to crisp up the skin. You let it sit there for three, four minutes. Resist the urge to play with it because it will stick. So leave it, leave it, leave it. If you start smelling skin that's getting singed, then it's time to turn, <laughs> okay? Then you just turn it over on the other side and let it singe some more. Okay. Flip it over on the other side, starting to crisp up. By the way, fun fact, did you know that a charcoal grill is actually hotter when it's open because of all of the oxygen and those coals um, staying that hot? When you shut a grill, you're actually bringing down the temperature. Just a fun fact. Now that we've crisped up the skin like that, we're going to cook in indirect heat put them so that the meatiest part of the chicken leg is facing the coals but see how I backed them off so they're not directly over the coals then we will shut the lid and let that let that go for about 25 minutes 25 is just right we're going to shut the top part of the grill to keep the steam in there. So twist that. Be careful, it's hot. Keep the slats open on your grill on both sides so the air keeps circulating. If you shut everything, your coals will go out because they won't be able to breathe and then you can smell kind of this strange smell when coals go out. So leave it open so they can breathe. What do you do for those 25 minutes while you're waiting? Well, you open a jar of stubs. Or you can make your own sauce, but it'll just end up tasting like stubs. Might as well use stubs. Now would also be a good time to find a thermometer to test the chicken for 160 degrees. I hate all those fancy ones and digital and set the timers and no. See right there? I just like a very simple eyeball it, get me around 160 degrees, we're good. Okay, lean in close, I'm gonna tell you another secret. Don't you dare take barbecue sauce out of the fridge and put it on the chicken. Do what I told you, you add hot to hot, you put that in the microwave first, get that nice and warm, then you go slather the chicken with it, mm-hmm. Okay, it's been 25 minutes. Let's pop the lid, slather on the barbecue sauce, 
Now, my husband doesn't like barbecue sauce, but okay. So, um, hit it on the side that's facing up, then flip them over and hit them on the other side. And shut the lid, we're half done, you're gonna go another 25 minutes. What do you do for these next 25 minutes? I'd be getting the table ready, putting together any easy sides, so that when this is done, everything will be hot and ready to go. Mm-mm, good. Yeah, I just took it right off the grill. That's what it looks like. Juicy, yummy, not dried out, crispy skin, succulent barbecue sauce. Thanks for watching Cooking with Mrs. B. Now I'm gonna let that slide.